Welcome back, survivors. I'm Survival This, and we return to Carnivores 2 Plus on the channel. So, last week we just dipped our toes into the waters a bit, and we actually were able to get enough points from that hunt to open up the rifle as an option. So, you probably have heard me whine and moan and complain a few times that I don't believe a pistol or a revolver are your best ways to start any hunting game. You should get something that's more a medium range. And we'll see if the rifle is able to do that, because you basically have, let's see, close range, close range, well, close to medium. I will give it that it does have some distance towards medium, but basically, short, medium, short, short, medium, short, and kind of eh, really difficult to use in any sense, so I don't give it any ranging. Medium range, and then long range. So everything's looking good, so we'll hop right in back to the ancient coast to see how different it is trying to use the rifle for this kind of hunting. I'm hoping that shot precision is true and we're going to get a very different sort of hunt than we did last time, but the only way to know is truly hop in, so let's get right to it. Okay, so we're all loaded in now. Yeah, the rifle is basically, I think, just a little bit of an edit to the shotgun. Because I know a lot of the things are actually very similar between the two, but it looks like this... No. Oh. Ah, oh, shoot. Parasaur... Oh, it is still just up there. Very accurate. Those two shots... Oh, that actually reminds me, I gotta do down the mouse sensitivity. Oh, both those shots hit, and they were exactly within the sight. So, I love that for the old... G like an OG Carnivores mod. If the weapons are accurate, mortal zones are a great thing to have. But when they aren't, they are frustrating to try using and dealing with. Okay, I think just Galimimus that went running off. Just want to be careful because I still think there is the chance that we'll get things like the uh, Velociraptors and that spawning in. Okay, so it is accurate, well, it is more accurate than the revolver and the pistol, but at long range, I still should be a bit smarter about using my shots. So that one's gotten a few more kind of pumped into it. And also goes to show how tanky the animals are if they do use mortal zones. It really did lean a lot more heavily into either you get those zones or you use up way too much ammo per animal without it. So we'll probably be doing a few hunts this episode, just so that we can really try our best using the rifle out. And I just got to catch up to where it is again. I'm pretty sure that's just the ambient of the map, or like the ambient sounds to the map. I think it would be cool though to have like... Alright, just Galmimus again, because the model is so similar to the raptors. Probably going to be a little jumpy towards that for a while. Actually, probably be something that would be smart to always be jumping in regards to. Okay, so went up over the hill. And now, where exactly are you past the top here? Okay, some distance away still. Now, the wind is generally in our favor, so we should be able to get up within certain range to, like, get it. There we go. Now, that was probably the mortal zone hit, but it could even have just been to, with the amount of bullets I had put into it as well, took it down. But we'll go over, check out our Parasaur, and then try getting another one, because we still do have a number of shots. And as long as I'm a little more patient, and I actually let the opportunities arise, I think we'll be able to make a lot of use out of these last shots. But there's our Dozen Dino. Has a little bit of an animation to it as it's breathing in that. And should... Ah, you know what, maybe what we'll do is we'll try putting out a call, see if anything responds. Well, you're supposed to be asleep. You're not supposed to be calling back. That seems to be something with 
some of the uh, games where even if you tranquilize the animal, it still kind of registers they're alive, so I guess they can respond to any calls you put out. I'm also kind of tempted just to try going over to the little island just because that is more, like, isolated, so stuff doesn't always have the chance to go running off on us. Problem with that is normally I'd like to try to have a fair amount of ammunition for it because you might get a little more trigger happy with going after some of the things on there, but... Okay. Okay, well we got the ambient sound, but we got another parasaur out here. Over here. Not out here, over here. So let's go over, see what we can do, and try to get it as well. Now I think the hardest part about the game for like what is going to set the animals off is going to be the hearing detection they have. Because you don't really get a way of knowing how much sound are you making. Like I still don't know if like crouching increases your hearing but reduces your visibility or what. I kind of feel like in some ways that might be the case. But again, I don't have enough to, like, reliably say, okay, yes this way, or not. Oh, there are actually two, well, there were two right there. Oh, wait, there actually might be more than just the two, there might even be a third. Yeah, there kind of is. Okay, well, we got one right there. Yeah, see... Told you we can make the shots count. That's another one down. Now try not to go in too quickly. Just give them a little bit of time to see what they're going to do. Because the water is right there. Oh, I, th oh, I thought I actually took it down with the one shot, but it looks like I didn't. Oh, no, I... Oh, so this might... Oh, okay, so then the one I did actually get taken down up there wasn't the same one we started with. That was a different one, so... Then... Okay. So one of the other ones that's still down in this area is the one that's pumped full of bullets. So we gotta try to see the... figure out which one that is. But we did get a second one with just that single shot, and that is why I like a rifle so much. Accurate, precise, and you don't have to feel like you need to really, like, defy and break the game systems to really get in close for the animals. Now, granted, if you are able to understand how to sneak up super close using the pistol and the revolver, the rest of the game is probably much easier, but I think it's a much tougher learning curve to try to even get into the mods that are like that. I know they can be frustrating to a point where you almost want to just quit with them, I'm sure there have been a few series that I tried starting and ran into that, but the big thing is to be patient and kind of understand what's in place for as you're going along, or what the systems sort of are. Got little moss chops here, oh, and the Brachiosaur out there enjoying a little bit of a, eh, probably a snack or something. Oh, now little moss chops. Oh, there's our Parasaur way out there. Or one of them. Oh, both of them. Okay, so the other one is definitely quite a bit bigger. Yeah, so we'll probably be going for the other one since that one just kind of startled. Although, again, here's the problem. I'm trying to figure out, okay, how is the best approach here? Because it's, it's starting to go uphill there. Oh, there you go. You're starting to come out. Okay. So you guys are actually about the same distance. I was hoping it would have stayed still. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I love how accurate and precise the rifle is. Definitely my recommendation for if you guys do start. It might be a struggle to get the parasaurs you need, but as soon as you get the rifle, main that and focus on that, because that's going to let you hunt so much easier and open up all the other weapons to try out other ways to basically hunt. Because as you can see, I only had, what, the four or five shots left, maybe? 
we've gotten four parasaurs this hunt, and it hasn't even been half the time last episode was yet. Oh, I love a nice rifle. I truly, truly do. So there's you, and there's you. And I think with those, we'll act. Never mind, we have another opportunity. I was going to say, we'll head back with just that, but... Considering how the map has only had parasaurs so far... Oh, excuse me. I think we'll see about getting this last one, too. Kind of tempted to try a distance shot. Which I think actually paid off. It did. Oh, I love a nice rifle. Like, it just feels so nice, and you actually know you're aiming and going to get that precise shot. Sure, it doesn't have, like, a zoom-in scope like a sniper rifle does, but as long as you are able to use the sights well... Not in that situation, but the other one before... You will be able to get a lot of nice shots off, and those mortal zones, which are so key and vital to actually being able to, uh, take down... Yeah, definitely... Definitely recommend getting that rifle soon. And also using the Mortal Zone Chart mod, or kind of like the add-on for this mod, I have in the description down below in the video, too. But that's one thing that I do have to think is really weird with some mods, is if you're going to use the Mortal Zone system, it's almost a mandatory you keep the, like, hit zone charts in the game with it. But we'll head back to the menu, take a look at our points now, and probably head for another hunt. Okay, we're back in the menu, and yeah, you can see that opened us up to a lot of options now. Parasaur, Ankylosaur, Stegosaur. Um, you know what, I'll probably go by or... Actually, I could even go for an even more of a hunt now. The Stego is just the head. The Anki will be tricky because it's going to be that underbelly. I think that's an animal the shotgun would probably be best at. But for the other two, the rifle is going to work out well, so we'll hop in for another hunt, just enjoy a bit more. And then continue chatting once we're actually in that hunt. Okay, so we're back and loaded in. We'll get our rifle out, and I think we're on... Yeah, we are on the little island down here. Okay, that's going to be pretty helpful. I mean, the wind is not at all, actually, but... Huh, there's Dimetrodon. She's with the size of him, he's almost his own... Could almost be a roster animal in its own right. I know, he's just ambience. Or an ambient animal. So we want to slowly work our way inwards to find something we can actually get points from. But yeah, I'm trying to think of what my favorite, like, firearm would probably be. I mean, thanks to Red Dead Redemption 2, I do have a leaning to the Evans repeater you can get in there. Both, I like the lever action of a rifle because I think that's a really, just like, more engaging way to reload it. Or cycle through and chamber new rounds. And also, I kind of like not a super big and long rifle, but a little bit more compact-ish. But I think, for rifle-wise, a bolt action is kind of my favorite. Just more single shot, you have to pull the bolt back. Just something I think is pretty satisfying to that sort of feeling. Like, if you're able to get that first shot to hit, then it's satisfying to just uh, pull the bolt back, eject the round, then that's the next one chambered in, or even just have to load the next one. But I think for this game, it definitely seems to be, and I think it probably will be, this rifle going forward will be my favorite of it. It's hard to beat a weapon that is just accurate and reliable. That's really what you basically want out of them. I think the only thing that might be superior to something like a rifle like this... The sniper rifle even could be a bit better, but I might lean more to this one just because of how accessible it is. But our weapons from things like, uh, Jurassic Park Revolution and... I'm trying to think of what else kind of has it. Uh, Siberian Expeditions with the... Is it the AUG? I think it's the AUG. Basically, the last weapon that was like a semi-auto rifle or... An automatic rifle. Oh, actually, we got somebody who's not on our roster, but decided to show up any... Wait, okay, that was definitely the, like, wind gave us away there. We got an Allosaurus on the map, and... Now, granted, I don't have the license to take him down, 
It might not hurt to see if we can actually get him with the rifle. Put our marksmanship to the test a little bit. So he did go running off, so he'll probably be up... Yeah, he's going to be up around there. Kind of, I guess, like, a refinery or... Actually, I'm not really sure what those be with the big tanks. I wonder if it's like... Uh, mining, or, sorry, drilling for oil. I don't, you don't exactly mine oil. I mean, I guess you could in a way. The technicalities of language at play there, but... Basically, you over by these two tanks or reservoirs of whatever's inside them. Yeah, you out of the way. We're not looking for you. We're not looking for you. I wonder if anybody thought of making, like, a gag carnivores mod where... It's actually just a bunch of little ambient animals you have to go after with things like, say, a slingshot or... Like, little small arms to match. That actually might make for a funny mod, because... You'd have all the models and animations basically in the game already. You just have to have them plugged in place of the roster animals. And then you'd have to kind of think of the weapons, so... Maybe a slingshot, a... BB, right, BB gun or something like that. That might be an interesting idea for anybody who's bored and wants to make a little bit of a silly mod for carnivores. Just make it a bunch of small game animals or small game hunting. Dimetrodons, Moz Chops, Galmimus. I'm trying to think of what other ambient animals there are, although with the ones that are also in other mods, you could even probably just like pick and choose and get yourself a nice roster. Oh, I just remembered something too. Allosaurus is a carnivore, so he might have actually migrated to the mainland. That's right, I kind of forgot that's... Only the herbivores get stuck on this island. All the carnivores can swim across and might be able to get, like, back and forth. So that might be why we don't see Allosaurus anymore back there. Might have actually moved over here to get away from us. Or even just swam out to sea, too. That's something they can sometimes do. There's the herbivores that have, like, the AI pathfinding where... There's, like, invisible walls around the water so they can't go swimming out in a way. And thankfully the game's not crashing with us being in the water. Very handy. I think, yeah, this is Direct3D because, again, easy way to tell what uh, video driver setting you're using is to basically look at the ground as you're moving into it. Like, this is all static and unchanging, so that's Direct3D. But if it does, like, the weird sort of spreading and waving stuff, that's 3DFX Glide. Oh. Well, hello. This was definitely worth the swim. I didn't want to come a little bit more over that slope, or over that little bump there. I was going to say, that would have been a nice way to just get an easy Stegosaurus to take. Oh, actually, kind of a chunky one, isn't he? 11.01 .01 tons. There you go, you're turning around. Oh, actually. Yeah, I'll have to keep on him. I don't want to put shots into him when he's running, just because it's going to be pumping a lot of shots into something that has so much health otherwise. Always try going for the mortal zone shot, even if it's like running away from you. If it's a mortal zone that gets completely hidden as it's turning to flee, save your shots and start the pursuit. Those rounds are precious as you're going through a hunt, and you'll definitely want to make sure to make the most of them. What I probably should have done was lined up the binoculars just right with its head, quickly switch the rifle, and immediately take the shot. Because I think that's a way you can almost kind of cheese it in a way. So I think as soon as the weapon's out, it's like locked on to where the crosshairs of the binoculars were, and then it slowly starts doing the like almost circle effect. So way to cheese that is just by being fast enough with the swap and shot. We'll probably try that here once we get into sight, or once we get a visual on him again. He shouldn't be too far off. Yeah, he's also getting himself kind of stuck up into this corner area. If he's up around the point, we should be able to make 
pretty short work of them if we get the opening. Yeah, I can see the blood trail kept going to that point there. Yeah, okay, so he's definitely gone beyond that one hill. Now, is he down between or did he go up and over? Oh, there's that maybe him there. No, that's not. The weight's not the same. Yeah, we got a chunky one for like the size or the weight rating on it. Although this might not be a bad chance to put my theory to the test. Oh shoot, I just gotta... I'm hoping I can get it when it's just going to stop again. Or we'll get a better chance at its head. Although, I think that's our chonky one up there. Yeah, that is. Okay, did unload a lot of rounds to finally get it down. But I was figuring we are at the time limit. So I'm just going to try for this other guy quickly. I don't think it actually really has anywhere it can run off to. Yeah, I think it's going to be stuck around here till it calms down. I do want... <clears throat> I do want to try using the binoculars again for that quick shot. Or the quick swap shot. But we'll have to wait till we can actually get a little bit of a visual on it. I'm surprised the size difference. That was a big stegosaur compared to this other one. I don't know if that means that's like actually the size difference they generally have, or that would have made a very good trophy compared to the usual ones you might come across. Okay, so he's... Let's get him out if we can. No, no, just the moss chops. See, I think it's still somewhere up there. I know there's kind of like a slope towards the water. Oh. Hmm. He's still kind of... Oh, okay, he did calm down. Let's see if we can get it over that little bump there, or over that bit of a ridge. Okay, kind of... Come on, wrap up your eating. I am kind of on a clock here. I don't want to let this go too long. Oh, you're going to make me have to try to line. Oh, no. Ooh. Wasn't my trick, but still got that shot in. So we'll take those two stegos and we'll head on our way back the menu to end this episode off. But some very good hunting. I love the rifle. Okay, we're back in the menu and we almost actually earned enough to get the Allosaurus unlocked too with everything else. So we're definitely going to be going pretty well using the rifle as our weapon for a few hunts going forward. We might even go to Delphi. I think we will do Delphius next. A little way to compare between the Dinosaur Hunt version and the OG version. But thank you guys for joining me on this episode of Carnivores 2 Plus. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give us a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave it all in the comments right down below there. Again, the Mortal Zone charts that are kind of like an add-on mod should be down in the description just under where you can pick up the mod yourselves. So hopefully they'll help you guys out a lot more. Because I do think, without these being like your conventional ones of lungs and heart, you really do need a little bit of a diagram just to show you where to go after. This is going to be probably a fantastic series going forward, and I thank you guys for joining me with this early stages. Until I do catch you all next video, though, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.